Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's November 2nd, if you can believe it. And these are your headlines. First, we're hearing about some really nice striped bass being caught along the south shore of the Cape. We're also hearing about Albies in Central Buzzards Bay. And over in Rhode Island, there's been tons of Bonito. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Again, we've got a few news items to share with you. The first one comes to us from the fisherman's Jenny Ackerman. She's going to show us a new replacement for the snag and drop rig that surf fishermen are using down in Jersey. Check this out. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. And today we're going to talk about breaking bad habits, the bunker snag. We got JM here and he's going to talk about some innovation to the striper game. Surf casters are doing it, boat fishermen are doing it. And JM's going to give you the rundown on why you should start doing it. How you doing? So a bunch of us surf casters, basically from the Berkeley Striper Club, we're up on the beach and, you know, we're watching guys snag and drop with those big giant leaded an lead anchors. And uh, it's now illegal to do that. And if you want to catch a trophy fish and you're catching it on an illegal snag, you really can't even post a picture of the damn thing. So the guys from Berkeley Striper Club, Wes Darcy, came up with a circle rig, which is legal. This is a circle hook. It's a 10-0. It's tied to a loop knot. I like to use 80-pound test only because the hook sticks out like this. It's wiry, and it doesn't flop around, and it's easier to snag a fish. We also put a clip or you could put a loop on the bottom and use two to four ounces. I use four ounces with the big bunker because it controls the fish a little better and it snags a little better. It gives a little weight to it. And basically when you snag these bunker, it's just the same as any other snag. You throw it into the school and you rip it through. You rip it hard. Once you feel a little wiggle, give it another rip and that will set the hook right through the bait. And nine out of 10 times, it goes right through the bunker and in a good place for some reason. Seems like it's always in the back or in the tail, but it goes through and the bunker stays alive longer. Doesn't have three hooks in it or two hooks in it. And uh, it's proven it works. We caught bass on it on the beach, 30 pound class bass. Wes Dorsey's done, caught several bass and uh, I give him credit to the surf one. I started using a smaller rig, which you can make also for the peanut bunker, out of a 6-0 circle hook. And uh, same th deal, a little lighter weight, and you can rip that through the peanuts, as well as this. I've caught fish on this with peanuts also. So it works, and it's legal. And you could take your trophy fish and, and post it and take a picture of it, and knowing that you caught it legitimately. Yesterday we were using this rig out on the boat and it was working snagging bunker easily, just as easy as the bunker snag. So boat fishermen and surf casters, get yourself some rigs. Grumpy has pre-tied rigs, make your own, they're easy to make. They have them pre-packaged here and it's a single rig. Uh, a lot of guys are starting to invent these crazy rigs with two hooks and three hooks and double hooks. The simpler, the better in the surf and the safer for the fish. This won't get tangled up in the bunker schools as much as a double hook one will. And you don't need all of those hooks. It's just endangering the fish even more. So I suggest the simpler, the better, especially in the surf. And what you want to do is, you, you know, you got to use a stiffer line so it doesn't get tangled in the bunker's gills because they tend to twirl. That's why I like a little heavier weight. So good luck out there. It works. Next up, we're going to take a quick look at what's going on in the Dreamboat Challenge this week. This week, it was all about the Blackfish in the Dreamboat Challenge. We had four nice togs hit the board and some points did change hands at the top of the tournament. 
Mark Beninetti of Pawkatuck, Connecticut, started the bidding with his 7.88 pounder, landing him in sixth place. Andre Ledeau put up a good one at 8.96 pounds, landing him in third place for the category. Dreamboat leader Kyle Krause upgraded his tog from 8.2 to 8.9, but actually fell two spots to fourth place. And the top tog of the tournament so far belongs to John out of Huntington, New York at 10.26 pounds. The top three now look like this. Luke Citarelli drops a point but remains in third place with 22 points. Bob Cifarelli remains in second place with 24 points. And despite shaving a couple points off his leading score, Kyle Krause sits firmly atop the leaderboard with 32 points. Look out for Andre Ledeau who sits just outside the top three with 17 points and could crash the party with one more nice fish. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21 foot Steigercraft center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Now I've got some local news for you guys. I just want to remind you that Rhode Island has started this new tradition of stocking salmon, uh, Sebago salmon, ahead of. Uh, Veterans Day and that stocking is underway right now. So if you check around some of those ponds, if you check in the check the article that I wrote in the November edition uh, of the New England edition here and you'll see that there are seven ponds that they typically stock. I have not been able to confirm that they're definitely stocking all seven or that there aren't a few more that they're adding to the list. But I know that the stocking is underway and uh, it might be a good idea to start keeping an eye on some of those places. Get out there and catch some salmon. I saw some pretty nice fish in the hatchery and uh, I think it's going to be a good year for that. And the last thing, of course, is the giveaway, which is ongoing now. This one's going to run through the last Wednesday in January. So we're doing fall into winter this time. And um, I actually have not picked out what I'm going to give away this, this time around. I, I have a whole bunch of stuff at home, and I just haven't gotten around to picking it. I promise you it's going to be a good one, and uh, I'll give you the details on that next week. But um, you guys know the drill by now. It's got to be a recent photo. It's got to show you holding your fish. And it's got to be emailed to me at deanderson at thefisherman.com. Just make sure you've got, you know, giveaway or contest in the subject line so I know what it's for. Or you can text it to the number on the screen. And I will compile and collect those photos. And then we'll pick a new winner out in January. So send them in when you can. Moving over into the reports now. Um, I think we can finally declare the striper fishing in Maine pretty much done. I uh, have heard about a few fish being caught inside the estuaries or up in the marshes, but the main body of fish is pushed out of there, and I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's over for the year. But what a year it's been in Maine, and I mean, I think it lasted longer than most anglers up there would have expected, so, I mean, A pluses across the board for that. However, move just, just south, you know, into New Hampshire, especially the southern end of New Hampshire, there's still lots of striped bass there. I've heard of some pretty nice fish, like up into the mid-30 inch range there, and then pushing even further down into the Plum Island area. There's been a lot of bait in the area. There's even been some adult bunker around, and um, the fishing's been pretty decent. Let's uh, hear about more on that from James Jukes. As you can tell, uh, that hasn't really slowed the fishing much. Uh, the size of the fish we've been getting up on the island has definitely gotten smaller, which is okay. Uh, still seeing a few waves of fish come through and uh, guys north and south are still seeing the same as what I'm seeing up on the island uh, over the weekend we had uh, some slot fish not many a bunch of smalls which is uh, part of the course to get to this final stage of the migration and uh, that they, they were hitting top water during the day uh, Right at first light, last light, uh, a lot of uh, semi-blitzes, I'd like to say. Uh, not a lot of fish, not a lot of birds, but they're still there. Uh, they'll be coming for probably another week or so, and maybe we see a push of bigger fish, who knows? I don't know. I'll be out there, though. Uh, and then uh, as far as the freshwater concerned, you know, the trout fishing has been pretty good. I know guys uh, on the river, uh, where I'm at now, is they have been hitting some pretty big pike. If you want to get pike, get out and get it. Um, 
me and my fishing partner Clayton we went out and did some carp fishing and we got into a few over the weekend in some of the other ponds around guys have been doing well on the bass as well so uh, fall fishing at its finest right now so get out there and get going guys now from Gloucester all the way through Boston and down to like Nantasket Beach there's been a lot of blitzing going on over the last week uh, we're starting to see more mackerel showing up there's been some adult bunkers showing up in the area and then you've got lots of peanuts uh, all throughout that region so anywhere you're finding concentrations of bait you're finding striped bass and a lot of times there's blitzing going on guys are finding a lot of this during the daytime uh, you know getting them on like bucktails and paddle tails uh, top water plugs like pencils and spooks uh, or swimming plugs you know anything like a little uh, hydro minnow or something like that especially if it's got some shine to it uh, guys have been doing quite well on those most of the fish are like you know 20 to 35 inches a few fish up to like 25 pounds in the mix and um, you know by all accounts the action has been really good and um, not a ton of guys are on on these bites either so um, it's been a it's been a pretty good late season bite in that area if you, once you get south of there though down into situate down into Plymouth the bite has been slower there's been stripers in the area there's been bait in the area but just not that concentration of fish I do expect that all those fish up there will slide into that area and maybe by next week um, we'll be seeing more action in that region getting out onto the Cape the Bayside beaches and the outer beaches have been just okay um, you know sporadic hits of fish I think your best chances are going to be at the mouths of the estuaries or up inside uh, but the best striper fishing on the Cape right now is taking place on the Nantucket Sound shorelines uh, especially outside you know or, or around all of those inlets along that shoreline been some really nice fish um, met a lot of peanut bunker in the area there's been some silver sides it's been some sand deals and I've even heard rumors of some mullet uh, coming out of some of these estuaries up there which has fueled some really good striped bass fishing we're seeing fish from like 10 pounds up to like 25 pounds a lot of top water action there as well a lot of guys doing well in bucktails and paddle tails also in that same area we're seeing Benito we're seeing albacore um, and the further or closer you get to Martha's Vineyard the better your chances are with that there are some small bluefish peppering through that whole area and especially along the south side of the vineyard has been uh, really hot for those smaller blues then you get up into Vineyard Sound and the Elizabeth Islands uh, talk to some guys who fished Cuddy Hunk from the surf last week and they did very well um, especially when we had that hard wind and the togging all on the Elizabeth has been very good you push through the Elizabeth and get on the mainland shoreline of Buzzards Bay you're finding lots of tog up in there and then you get up toward the canal um, I heard that a big push of Albies came through from the east end so that might be the last of those Albies that were uh, out in Cape Cod Bay pushing through and uh, from what I heard striper wise smaller fish overall this week but a few better ones uh, let's get a little better rundown on that with the triumphant return of East End Eddie hi Dave it's nice to be back so the migration has come to a uh, temporary halt because uh, I think the fish are confused because of the nice weather they think it's summer again uh, there's a lot of big fish holding uh, off of situate marsh field a lot of bait in Plymouth Harbor holding fish and so uh, hopefully when they start migrating again they'll take a right into the Cape Cod Canal instead of heading for P-Town. Uh, we had a you know a lull but uh, then uh, Hollywood Petraka caught some nice fish a 35 inch that weighed out to 25 pounds and a 37 inch the next morning uh, both fish on an old-fashioned loaded cotton cordel and Scott Yule uh, caught some uh, slots and slightly larger with his uh, pe small pencils and uh, Zach Attack Baker uh, also caught some sl uh, slots and larger with his uh, trusty blue uh, fish lab that he uses quite often um, so the morning that the Patriots woke up in Miami uh, it was crowded here in the canal in the east end dozens of guys uh, lined up catching a lot of fish uh, I, don't, I didn't hear about any big ones but a lot of slots and uh, smaller and a lot of bluefish, a lot of big bluefish. Uh, Paulie the painter Gravina uh, caught a, a few smalls and he also caught a slot and he got a, a enormous bluefish all off the bottom jigging. Um, I was down near the Sagamore Bridge and I caught a, a small striper, I put him back in the water. I was using a, a, a white Bill Hurley canal killer, five ounce uh, soft plastic paddle tail 
And so then I caught a bluefish who did no harm to my glow. I was surprised. So I released him. Then I threw it out and I caught another bluefish that completely destroyed my paddle tail. So usually, you know, they, they bite it right below the hook. This guy not only bit it below the hook, he bit it under the hook. So the whole uh, sh uh, shank was exposed to the curb. And um, the only thing left was about two inches of white soft plastic. So obviously I needed a new lure. I turn around and I look up. Th this particular place I was fishing is very steep bank. And more so than most places in the canal. And the rocks were arranged by the devil. It was awful. So I look up at my bike where my surf bag is. I'm going to get a lure. I thought, you know what? It's going to take me a long time to get up there and get it done. And there are fish breaking in front of me. So just for the heck of it, I threw my two-inch little tiny stub out in the middle of this frenzy, and a bluefish hit it right away. Then with the same lure, the same destroyed lure, I caught three more bluefish and a slot. So... You know, uh, it's like Dick Copwood, the late, great Dick Copwood used to own uh, Mako's. His son Jeff uh, owns it now. But Dick once told me, you know, Eddie, if you throw a sock out there, the fish will hit it sometimes. So you never really know. Um, so the, the restrooms are closed in the canal now. And my tip of the week is if you use one of these porta potties, bring a clothespin for your nose. Uh, so I'll be away in Disneyland. Uh, Disney World and we'll go to Florida with our grandchildren and so I will see you again on November 16th and uh, until then catch a big one. For more than 20 years anglers everywhere have come to know one thing that nothing says no to fish bites. And then just heading out of the canal region and going up the middle of Buzzards Bay there heading west um, there's been a lot of bait in the like New Bedford, Mattapoisett, Dartmouth area. A lot of bait coming out of those estuaries there, which has been holding a lot of false albacore. There's also been some really good striped bass action in that same region. And, you know, they've been kind of incrementally moving to the west, but I think with all that bait there, they're taking their time. And, uh, you know, it's just another indicator that we're probably going to see a late run of stripers. And I think it's going to be a lot of opportunity in, these, in the next week or so to get a November albie, which I'm definitely going to be trying to do. I don't think I've ever caught one in November before. So that's a... Uh, you know, that'll be a nice little feather in the cap or bucket list check uh, to do. Then just getting out more toward Westport, um, I was out with Jason Colby on Friday, and uh, we were togging. The tog bite was great. We caught lots of sea bass, even though you can't keep them in Massachusetts. We had to throw them all back. We even had trigger fish, so that lets you know that the water temps are still pretty high. And we saw tons of schools of albies out there. So there's a pretty major movement of albies throughout most of Buzzards Bay. And, um, you know, once again, I think that's going to fuel a late run of Albies. And that's what I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. Jumping across the border into Rhode Island, I think the thing that most people are talking about or want to know about in, in Rhode Island right now are Albies. And the eastern half of the state, we're not seeing a lot of them. They are showing up here and there, but the one thing that we are seeing are tons and tons of Bonito. Uh, I've talked to multiple people now who have had double digit Bonito days over the last week. And many of these, catches have been made from shore. Um, a lot of the guys are getting them on small tins, but something else that's been working really well is like a 5-inch SP minnow. Uh, something with a, with a shiny finish, something with a silvery shiny finish has really been getting it done. Um, most of these Bonito are on the smaller side, you know, say like 3 to 4 pounds or so, but there's been a few decent ones, you know, up to 7 pounds landed, and uh, every once in a while some Albies come through as well. So, you know, the, uh, the funny fish season, as some people call it, is going to extend at least into the first week in November here, and I have a feeling it's going to go beyond that. Uh, for a little bit more on what's going on in the eastern half of the state, let's toss it over now to TJ Kopecky. Good things happening still. Lots of bass. Um, I did see a wave of larger fish come into the Barrington and Warren Rivers, and I actually know that by a couple of my buddies fishing in the Warren River. I've been catching fish up to 40 inches. Uh, that's right, some bigger fish. And uh, just to prove that, when I had a uh, tog outing in the Warner River behind the American Tourista, and as I was reeling up about a 14 inch fish, a very large striper followed that to tog up and tried to take it. Uh, so I do know they're here, and I wish I, I had a camera to videotape this because that big striper actually stayed there for a little while as I held that fish in the water. 
uh, and then he took off uh, once he saw us. But uh, there are some very big fish right now up inside of those rivers, and they're foraging on a lot of different baits, um, especially mullet. Uh, so there are some bigger pogies in the six inch class that I've seen swimming around, even bigger. Um, so if you have an opportunity to get up into the Barrington Warren Rivers and fish, uh, that's actually been my hot spot. Um, I've heard some reports of lots and lots of smaller striped bass inside of Maho Bay, uh, which is very typical for this time of year for them to be uh, chasing some smaller baits that are coming out of the rivers, uh, especially the Lees River, <coughs> the Coles River, and out of the Kickamute River. Uh, and I always say this, that Spar Island has been really good. Uh, 19 feet of water on the front side of that front island of Spar Island has been really well. Um, Mount Hope Point is another spot that's been really hot and into Church's Cove. Uh, Church's Cove, uh, two days ago, uh, the bass had all the bait locked up inside of there and it was a feed fest. Um, People are doing well with fly fishing in there. People doing well on soft plastics and people doing well on top water. Uh, but these bass are on the feed right now and they're definitely getting ready to go. And especially with this colder weather we've had, it's kind of sparked it up a little bit for pretty much all the fish. Um, the tog fishing is like at its A1 best right now inside of Narragansett Bay. Uh, Great fishing from the Mount Hope Bridge at the Pilings. Great fishing up inside the Warren River uh, where I fished this weekend, only about six feet of water. And I was uh, catching quite some good 20 inch fish. Uh, my biggest fish was 22 inches, uh, all on crabs and I was using jigs. So there are some good ground fishing opportunities and it uh, looks like it's going to be a nice weekend coming up with weather in the 60s, low winds. So uh, if you can get your crabs, you can get out there. Uh, I think this would be the weekend to do it. Uh, we got bass. Haven't heard much about bluefish in the bay. Uh, but uh, I'm sure there might be some big ones still hanging around. So uh, get out there and fish. And uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Tell your lines. Aquidneck Island area has had some pretty good striped bass action. Uh, there's been a pretty good amount of bait going in and out of the bay. In fact, there was a big school of bunker that moved up the Sakonet River late last week. Uh, there were some whales on them that actually moved right up into the mouth of the Sakonet River and then they kind of pulled off. And when they left, some big stripers found those, uh, found those bunker and drove them right up into Mount Hope Bay and then they just kind of dispersed and disappeared. But those, there were some really large fish in that school. It was almost like a tornado, you know, it just kind of happened. Everybody heard about it, and then by the time you got there, it was over. But um, it was just, you know, an interesting thing to see, and, and definitely also a, uh, an indication that despite the fact that we're moving into November, there's still plenty of opportunity to catch a really big striped bass in Rhode Island right now. So that's some exciting stuff. Um, but Aquidneck Island has had lots of fish. I think most guys would say that they would have expected to find some bigger fish for the last week of October than they did. So most of these fish have been, you know, 20 inches up to like the slot size. But good numbers of fish and they're being caught day and night, which is nice. Uh, getting down to Point Judith, I know we talked about this a little bit last week, but Point Judith is always a very good place to fish during the migrations. you got that big piece of land sticking out there, which is sort of forcing a lot of the migration to pass at the tip. Uh, same thing could be said for the Harbor of Refuge, you know, where the walls come together out there at the end. Um, so that's a good area, if, whether you fish in the surf or from a boat, to concentrate right now because migrating schools of bass, migrating schools of albies, bonito, all that stuff are going to be concentrated there and you're going to you're going to see more action than you might see other places around there. So uh, that's been pretty good. Togging all along that area has been exceptional. And right now, we're seeing lots of big tog. Uh, last week, we had some dinosaurs, as you may remember. We had a 19 uh, taken in Rhode Island waters. And uh, we haven't seen anything of that size this week. But I have seen fish up to 15 pounds online. And a lot of these fish are now coming from like 40 to 65, 75 feet of water. So the fish are moving out a little bit deeper, or at least the bigger fish are being caught in deeper water. So that's one thing that you can hang your hat on there. 
for a little bit more on that and some of the other things happening in the central region, let's toss it over now to Captain John Lee from JL Charters. I got out, I think three times this past week. They were all blackfish trips. All of them were close to Point Judith in 35 to 65 feet of water. I would I would call them okay. We didn't we never really ripped the fish. We had s some of the drops were good, and we'd catch a bunch, and then I'd move. We wouldn't catch them. We'd catch them. So it, the black fishing to me seems it's kind of hot or cold. You either you get on some fish, and then something changes and you lose that bite. You know you get them coming. You get them coming. And then boom, they're not there. You got to move. Sometimes you don't find them. Feels like I've been anchoring a fair amount to get fish. Again, someone else is always killing them. That's just the nature of fishing. Um, but I would say it's good fishing. It's not outstanding fishing. Um, I'm going to try some deeper drops this week, 80 feet, 90 feet, and see what happens. All right, have a good one. <laughs> from there uh, South County has been pretty good especially for stripers um, not seeing a lot of really big striped bass at least as far as who I've been talking to but there's been fish over the slot like fish up to 40 inches have been coming out of the breechways um, leaning more toward the smaller side though more toward the 30 inch range but um, good numbers of fish in the breechways good numbers of daytime action uh, stripers blitzing along the beaches you got some Benito in there you got some Albies popping up here and there uh, just very good action overall along that entire shoreline, basically from the west wall all the way out to Napa Tree. Uh, togging has also been really good in the rocky spots along that area. Still got some scup around as well. Um, but the, the best albi fishing that we're seeing in Rhode Island has definitely been more toward the western end, more toward Watch Hill, more toward Weekapog. Um, and that's what I have for you guys here in Rhode Island this week. Now crossing over into Connecticut, uh, Connecticut has sort of an interesting thing going on right now. I mean, tog season hasn't even been open a month yet, and togging gets a lot of attention in Long Island Sound. Now right now we've been seeing a lot of big fish out of Long Island Sound, and a lot of guys are putting tons of time into togging. But the thing that's kind of making it hard is there's also been phenomenal albie fishing. I mean, over the last week, but over the last three weeks, really. We ha we've had them in the Sound for over a month. We had one week where it kind of slowed down, and then it's been gangbusters ever since. And over this last week, the fish, you know, they were kind of talking about them being finicky last week. Well, this week they seem to be feeding quite well. And, um, you know, it's pulling a lot of guys off the tog bite. So um, I've seen tog this week in Rhode Island waters up to 13 pounds. Uh, the cool thing about Long Island Sound with tog, too, is they always tend to be shallower than they are other places. So a lot of these big fish are coming from like 15 to 30 feet of water. Whereas, you know, Rhode Island and Mass are seeing, you know, 30 to 75. So that's kind of cool. Also good for the guys that like to light tackle fish like I do with a jig and a spinner rod. Uh, it's easier in the shallower water, obviously. Um, so you've got that. You got, I mean, the Albies have been good, biting really well, actually, from pretty much the Thames River to the Connecticut River and then all the way out to Norwalk. So it's been, I mean, it's just, you just got to find the schools. You got to find the bait and... Um, and the bite has been, it's been exceptional. I mean, especially for this late in the season. It's just, it seems like these fish just don't want to leave. Striped bass wise, the Thames River has had a really good fall so far and that's continuing. I haven't heard of any like giants like we heard about last week, but still very, very nice fish up in there. You know, fish from like 25 inches up to 25 pounds. A lot of top water action, guys doing well at night on eels. Still some porgies around the area as well. Getting up into Niantic Bay, a lot more smaller fish up in Niantic Bay. But when you get out on the reefs like Hatchets and Bartlett's and Black Point and places like that, you're finding some better fish. Fish up into the 30-pound range are being caught. Um, Connecticut River, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Um, a lot of the fish that were in the river seem to have pushed out, but there's still a lot of fish around the mouth of the river and along those adjacent, shore, adjacent shorelines. So the bass fishing there has been pretty darn good. For a little bit more on that, let's toss it over now to Captain Mike Roy from Real Cast Charters. Hey, what's up guys? For this week's fishing report, as a result of all the rain we've been having every week, it's definitely pushed a lot of the uh, striped bass and a lot of the peanut bunker out of the rivers. So you have to move around a little bit to locate them, but we've been able to find some really great schools of surface feeding stripers pounding on the peanut bunker. So that's been exciting. Uh, there's still some bluefish mixed in, although they're, they're definitely thinning out day by day. Uh, the false albacore, still a whole bunch of them around all throughout Long Island Sound. You'll see them popping up. Um, they are fairly difficult to catch. They've been pretty finicky most days, but uh, there's plenty of them around. And the black fishing is improving uh, as I expected with the temperature starting to drop. It's just a matter of finding a piece of structure that hasn't been overfished. So um, good topwater stripers, good black fishing, good luck. Now let's head up the river and check in with Rowan Lytle. Hey everybody, uh, getting your report somewhat Bill Wetzel style here from the car. Um, so we're looking at a pretty notable pattern shift uh, this next couple days. Temperatures dropping rapidly. That should uh, change the fishing nice and dramatically in the Connecticut. I'm expecting uh, the pike fishing to uptick beautifully. Uh, that's one thing that will definitely improve. Uh, bass fishing will slow down. You're going to want to fish your finesse presentations more uh, and focus on somewhat deeper water. Uh, fish are going to be a lot slower. Uh, Panfish fishing should be pretty darn good. Uh, the lower river, the, the uh, white perch bite remains uh, really good. Uh, weather looks nicer this weekend. One thing I do want to point out, uh, it's a great time of year to be trout fishing in any of the Connecticut River tributaries or just the whole watershed. You know, the Farmington, the Salmon River, a lot of these rivers are fishing quite well right now. But it is the spawn. Uh, we want to be really mindful of how we're fishing uh, these bodies of water. Uh, you don't want to be stepping on reds and you don't want to be fishing actively for the trout that are spawning. Uh, you know, those are those are our future generations of wild trout. Avoid the pool tail outs in gravelly areas. That's where the fish are going to be spawning. And be mindful that those reds are going to be there until February. You know, our brook trout and brown, uh, brown trout won't emerge from their eggs until uh, next year in uh, late winter and early spring. So anywhere you're seeing reds now is somewhere you shouldn't be stepping uh, for the rest of the winter if you want those fish to recruit into the fishery and continue to provide high quality fishing uh, for, the, for, the rest of, for the rest of the next however many years. We want those wild fish in the system. Uh, but get out there, enjoy the beautiful weather it looks like we've got coming this weekend, uh, and enjoy. And now we'll make a little right out of the river here. We'll head out toward Westbrook and we'll check in with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. Still uh, plenty going on out there. We've got a great tog bite happening right now. Starting to see some bigger fish coming through, um, sixes and sevens and eights, as opposed to those uh, fish that seem to know they should only grow up to 15 and a half inches um, for our Connecticut 16 inch limit. Um, building a bite is working well right now. If you can get the right conditions, um, they can be moody in terms of tide and time of day and things like that. Um, so definitely give a spot 20 minutes, um, try to build a bite. Um, and usually once you've started with kind of half crabs, it can help to go to uh, kind of a medium, small sized whole crab as well. Um, the smaller ones will resist kind of pecking at the shell, whereas the bigger tog will have no trouble picking that thing right up. Um, still stripers and blues, uh, blitzing under birds, still, you know, a visual feed there that you're going to chase uh, if you want to, um, usually at mornings and, and evenings. Um, still plenty of albies around, um, as far as we've heard. Uh, they were here um, just yesterday, um, so definitely uh, still hearing good things about those guys. Who knows what this cold snap is going to do that we're going to kind of see here um, pretty soon, but um, still a lot going on out there. If you can uh, kind of thread the needle on a good weather day, um, it's a pretty amazing time um, to be out on the sound. So uh, get out there and good luck. Now, as we said, you know, there's been a lot of albies in the western half of the sound as well, and the bite has just been really good, um, especially for kayak and boat guys. It's tough for the shore guys for sure, but uh, still finding lots of albies there, still lots of striped bass on the reefs out there, still some porgies, um, and plenty of bluefish kind of darting in and out of the area as well. One thing you can concentrate on at this time of the year, though, is striped bass starting to move up into the Housatonic now. So. Um, Certainly it's not like it's like it is in the dead of winter when there's 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds or thousands of fish up in the river. But these fish are now moving in. There's a lot of bait in the area, and it's a good time to concentrate on the mouth of the Housatonic River. For a little bit more on what's going on in the western end of the state, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. The striped bass fishing has been fantastic this past week. Our water temps are starting to dip, and all these peanut bunker are flooding onto our beaches, and they're being met by hungry stripers and still big blue fish around. The Nauk Islands are fishing well. The Nauk Harbor is still fishing good. Diamond Jig and 11B on this full moon have been fantastic for big blues and bass. The mouth of the Housatonic is going off, so it's a really good time to fish. If you got, you know, if your guys' boats are getting pulled out, the marinas want them out. There's tons of shore fishing going on on our beaches. The blackfish bite still remains really good in the shallow water and on our deep water wrecks. Guys fishing shallow around Kakini Island, Sheffield, Green's Ledge are doing well finding limits. And then our deeper water wrecks behind the islands and then 20HC has been really good. 40 to 60 foot we're seeing some nice blackfish also. This time of year we see some really big porgies. I've seen like, you know, 17 inch porgies, 18 inch porgies mixed in with these blackfish. And also black sea bass are moving shallow too and guys are catching them as bycatch, big knotheads while they're black fishing. Thanks and good luck. And that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully you're gonna find them inspiring. You're gonna get out there and catch some fish. Still plenty of opportunity to catch albies. Still plenty of opportunity to catch big striped bass. And the togging has just been phenomenal. One thing I didn't mention is that there's been really good tuna fishing south of the vineyard. It's cooled off a little bit, but the fish are still there. Uh, so, I mean, the, the options are virtually endless. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. There's enough free content on there to give you a full taste of what we cover. We cover everything from Delaware all the way up to Maine. We've got travel pieces that reach outside the region. And every angling discipline that you can think of from fly rod and surf to offshore to kayak and paddleboard, it's all covered. Um, it's 30 bucks for, for a year subscription. You get 12 paper issues sent to your house. You get 26 digital editions sent to your email box. It's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. But after you go to the website, if you're still not convinced, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. I appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.